Hi, I am popping in for a pop-up live, pretty much unplanned, just needed to get in my tip application submission for my bachelor program and thought I would share the process with you. If you are working on a nail trainer hand, or if you've ever tried to work on a nail trainer hand, it's a little trickier than working on a person, just because the curve of the nails is a little different than working on a person. You want to come in and just kind of remove that shine a little bit, similar to working on a person. So I'm just gonna take that shine off the ends where I'm gonna put the tips. Since it's not an actual person, I don't need to do all the usual prep work. I can just remove that shiny spot at the ends where I need my tips to stick. How's everyone doing halfway through the week? Happy Wednesday to you. Hope your salons are recovering from shutdown and things are kind of getting kicked back in after school restarting. Maybe moms are finding their happy place escaping to you. I know I try to make my chair escape time. When you're working on a nail trainer hand, just make sure that if you're gonna apply some tips, you just get that little shiny bit off the ends where you're gonna be working with those tips and then you'll be good to go. I've got that all cleaned up and I'm ready to start sizing those tips and start working on that. So I've watched the video for the course that I'm taking with Light Elegance and they go through just like any other tip application course that I have taken in the past. And it shows making sure that the tip fits the nail. And it does mention if you can't get a precise fit on the nail that you do go a little bit past the size of the nail so that it gets the fit of the curve of the nail. Because we have all experienced if you really press the tip down and it flares out at the corners, that makes the tip really press up in the center and kind of pull itself away in the center. And that's when you get that pocket lifting and the tip is trying to fight that adhesive. And the tip adhesive just isn't usually strong enough to fight that pull or you get some cracking and all those fun things. So you wanna make sure that you get a really good fit. Hi, Annette. So I have a sample of all 10 sizes of the tips that came in that 101-201 student kit. And without even popping them out of the plastic, I'm gonna kinda of take a look. It looks like maybe the size two is gonna be pretty close. So let's take a look at him. And he's just a little big, but I can tell from the way that it presses, and let me get it up here a little closer for you. If we were to go a little smaller, we would really have to press it down onto that nail to get it to fit. So see how I have to kind of press it just a little bit to get it to fit that curve? Because these have a pretty good curve. Let me spin the hand so you can see. These have a pretty good C curve. So if I were to go smaller on the tip so that it fit precisely from sidewall to sidewall, see how this goes over the sidewall a little bit? 
if I were to get it to fit precisely from sidewall to sidewall, I would really have to smash that tip down. And if I really had to smash it down, it would make it more likely it would crack down that center when I went to trim the tip. And it would also make it more likely that it would potentially want to pop back up and create some center pocket lifting. So what I'm actually kind of evaluating is if I'm kind of having to press down on it a little too much, even though it's pretty big, it's a pretty curvy tip for my kind of wide C-curve nail. So I'm actually gonna try the size one, even though it's bigger, and see how it lays. Uh, that's a much better lay. So see how I really don't have to kind of press it down like I did the other one? So if I kind of lay this one down, it kind of lays on the tip a little more. Where when I set this one down, I'm really having to kind of flare those corners out quite a lot. So I'm going to stick this one back in the bag so he doesn't get dusty. And just set these off to the side for just a sec. Before I even apply this, I'm just gonna take the sides down a smidge so that there's less in the way when I go to apply it. I will perfect the fit of the sides once I actually apply them and make them match the natural sidewalls. But just to kind of debulk them a little bit, there we go. Now I have a much better fit and it's not hanging clear out there in Timbuktu off the sides. So it is still just a little bit too big, but I'm not smashing it down onto the nail. It actually just fits right on there. So number one is the one for the thumb. I'm gonna set that over to the side to hang out because I'm getting graded on this. So I wanna make sure it's the best fit possible. Let's take a look for this first guy. It's been a little while since I got my nails graded, so I'm a little nervous. I wanna make sure I do a good job. And now knowing that these tips are really curvy, I know that I probably wanna go a little bigger than what I think when I'm holding them up. And that's why you generally want to have, if you're going to use tips in the salon, you generally want to have a couple different styles so that you have styles that fit nails that are a little more flat and nails that are a little more curvy so that you have some different options. I think I'm going to try this six. Because when you have people come in, you'll have someone, let me see if I can... You'll have someone with a C-curve like this that is really C-curved, and then you'll have someone with a C-curve like this that is really square. So let's see how this six does on our square friend here. Oh, and that's looking like a really good fit. And it's not a huge hang-off, so I don't think I need to do a lot of filing before I put it on her, I'll be able to customize that sidewall once it's on. And I'm pretty sure this one is the same size. Yes. And possibly th this one. No, it's not quite. So I'm going to grab two sixes because that one and that one are the same size. A lot of times with people, these two fingers are the same size. So if you eyeball them and they look the same size, go ahead while you've got this one fitted, size this one and see if those nails happen to be the same size and set that size out before you go into sizing this one and just see if they happen to be the same size. All right, while I know that this was a six and this was almost a fit, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the five before I start fitting the middle finger so that I don't forget what size that was while I'm working on the middle finger. And 
And yes, going up just that little bit to the five is just what I needed. See how I don't have to press it down quite as much as I did with that six. It fits, rests on there really nicely. And it does need the sides taken down just a smidge before I put it on there so that it's not hanging off quite as much. Because I don't want to have to do a lot of filing close to the skin when I go to line it up. and file those sidewalls. There we go, I'm happy with that guy. And now back to the middle finger. So he looks, like he's not too much smaller than the thumb and the thumb was a one. So let's venture into a three, shall we? This really makes you appreciate your tip boxes where they're all lined out in their own little spaces, doesn't it? <laughs> but I'm also very grateful to have samples in my student kit so that I can try them out. It looks like the three would be a good fit from side to side, but what's happening? I'm having to really push it down for that flat square C curve and getting that flare. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump up to a two and go a little bigger. So we get rid of that flare and eliminate the chance or make it much less likely that it will crack down the center or have center pocket lifting. That is much, much better. It's not really even hanging off so much that I need to take down the sides before I apply it. I'll be able to get that in with just my filing once it's applied. So I'm super happy with that. We're gonna set him off to the side, get all these guys sealed back up so I don't pick them up and spill them when I pick them up. And then we'll go through and apply everyone. Now, if you are working with a nail trainer hand, it's a little different than working with a person. You want to be careful that you're not putting the adhesive on here and on the tip because that will be too much adhesive. Whereas you could put a little bit of adhesive on your person and a little bit of adhesive on your plastic tip and be okay. Working on the nail trainer hand, this is plastic. It's not going to absorb the adhesive a little bit like your natural nail would. So you only need to put it on one surface or you're going to have way, way too much adhesive. I'm going to grab a little bit of adhesive. And you wanna make sure that you're not using too much adhesive. If you find that your tips keep sliding around after you try to set them down on something and slide around and slide around and just don't set in place no matter what you do, it's possible that you're using too much adhesive and so your adhesive just can't set up. So make sure that you just put a little bit of adhesive, whoops, I didn't have quite enough adhesive. I took that tiny bit of adhesive too seriously. So now I've got to buff that off. It's been a day or two since I tried to put tips on with adhesive. And that's the beauty of going back through a class, like a student. So you get to do all the basics again. So let's try this again. A tiny bit of adhesive, but not so tiny that you can't put it on the nail. And this time I'm gonna turn it towards me in the light so that I can see the adhesive, not just you guys. All right. Now I can see that I have adhesive. And we're gonna place it. 
and hold it in place. And generally when you're pressing it into place, you wanna make sure you don't have any air bubbles. And by pressing it in the center, tips usually aren't gonna be strong enough because you don't want them to be so thick that they're solid. So those corners aren't gonna lay down. So after you're sure that the center is set, come back in with your thumbs and press those corners into place. And this is where it's really handy to be wearing gloves because if you have a little bit of adhesive kind of sneak up and stick to anything, it will stick to your gloves and not your fingers. Then ideally, you shouldn't have any adhesive little white bubbles. Here I can see I have a little white bubble, so I could have had just a teeny bit more adhesive in that corner. So I'm gonna know on the next tip that I need to make sure I bring my adhesive all the way to the sides, that I got plenty in the center, but I need to make sure I bring my adhesive all the way to the sides. So let's work on the next one. And this time I'm gonna take the brush and make sure I brush it all the way up into the corner. And press it into place. Hold it in place for a few seconds. And I can see I might should have took a little bit of the sides off this one now that I'm pressing it into place. Oops, I didn't hold it in place long enough. So now I've gotta take that off. Try that again. Yes, Trudy, this will be saved on my page and I'll also save it and pop it over onto YouTube so that it stays easy to find. Sleep well, thanks for popping on. All right, here we go again. This time I'm not gonna get impatient and pull it away too soon. And once you feel like your middle is probably set, you can go up and press those corners with your thumbs. Ah! Middle didn't set again. So that means I'm probably getting a little too happy with the adhesive. So on the thumb, I didn't have quite enough adhesive in the corners, so I freaked out and put too much. So now it's about trying to find that balance between too much adhesive and not enough adhesive. So let's grab another, what was that? Number six. Let's grab another number six. Yes, definitely get your beauty sleep. This will wait for you. So this time to try and get the balance on the adhesive, I'm gonna wipe the adhesive brush up one side of the bottle as I come out. And 
and I'm only going to wipe it from the center to the side of the tip once instead of going back over it. So hopefully by not going back over the inside there repeatedly, I'm not flooding the inside of that tip with adhesive. I'm going to use my shine. Oh, I can see where I didn't even touch the inside of it in one spot with adhesive. See where it's not shiny right there? So I didn't even put adhesive there. So I'm going to lay the adhesive down. Oh, no, it's just drying that fast. All right, so I'm going to lay it down one more time and keep it back from the lights a little bit. And then press it into place. And hopefully going over it that one more time to re-wet it didn't give me too much. If it did, we'll try a new trick on the next tip. Almost. I'm going to hold it just a little bit longer. Ah! Nope. Didn't do it. Move on to the next nail and I'll come back to this one. I'm going to let it chill for a minute. Sometimes if you get frustrated with one, if you just move on to the next one and let it chill, it gives you the opportunity to just reset. Especially when you're learning or practicing, instead of getting frustrated, just move on to the next thing that you're learning or practicing so that you don't get stuck. Because sometimes when you're learning or practicing, it's easy to get stuck on, ugh, I'm failing, I'm not doing it right, and then you're stuck at failure. Instead of getting stuck at failure, move on, try the next thing. So let's try it on this next nail and see if I can do it better. So I'm going to try coming up this side, laying the adhesive in side to corner, side to corner, and this time, instead of taking the time to be all chatty, I'm gonna flip it around and put it on right now. And see if the difference is I'm just hanging out too long. Nope, it is like evaporating super fast. So now I'm going to try, now I made sure it's wet, I'm going to let it hang out for a couple of seconds, and then put it on. And hold it in place. It's really toasty here. It's about 85 degrees in this room. So I'm guessing the adhesive does not like being this hot. And it continues to be ornery. I'll do this on a day when the weather is not so hot. or I'll stick the adhesive in the fridge. So it at least is not as hot. Is that gonna work? Maybe. Do the corners. Yes. So if your salon is really hot 
and your adhesive is really hot and it doesn't want to cooperate, it looks like the trick for that is going to be to make sure you get enough adhesive in the tip that it's wet and then flip it over ready to put it on the nail and give it a few seconds before you connect it to the nail so that it starts to evaporate but it doesn't completely evaporate and then press it into place. So let's go on to this next one. Grab some adhesive. whole section is wet. We're going to give it a couple seconds and then place it. Hold it in place to make sure it has a chance to set up. And then press the corners. Pinky. Give it a couple seconds. And set it on. Let it set up. I probably should have taken a little bit more off the sides of this one. It's always easier to tell once you get them on with the adhesive that you should have shaved the sides just a smidge more. Corners in. Let's come back and see if we can apply this one now that we've kind of learned. Um, these are, I'm doing the tip application. These are the tips out of my student box. The first hands-on assignment in the bachelor's program is tip application. So I am working on trying to get my adhesive to set up in a hot room on my nail trainer hand. I'm 
once I get this last one set up, we'll go through and do some tip blending. And that is the trick. So those of you in hot climates that don't have air conditioning, or if you are in warm salons, if you're near the hair dryers, or if you are near the pedicure chairs and it gets really warm at your nail table, when the adhesives get really warm, you wanna make sure you get enough adhesive in the well of the tip that it's wet and then flip it over and give it a couple of seconds to start to evaporate and then place it on. That was the trick to getting our adhesive to work when it was getting pretty toasty. So yay, I'm so excited that we got that figured out. Let's grab the tip cutters. And cut these bad boys down. Because it would not be fun to do this much filing. And for those of you that are new to tips, you want to make sure the blade of the tip cutter is facing you so that you don't rub it against the finger. And it's also thoughtful to grab the end of the tip so it doesn't go flying. And you want to make sure you make a quick decisive cut so that you don't bend the tip. So just cut really quickly and be done with it. Don't be afraid, just cut it and go. And just to kind of show you, if you cut slow, see how it's starting to flatten out that tip? It makes it more likely that you can get that crack down the center, especially if your tip's not fit correctly. Also, if the blade on your tip cutter starts to get dull, when it does that flattening out, it makes it a lot more likely that you can crack it down the center if your blade is starting to get dull on your tip cutter because it won't start slicing through. Like I just replaced mine not that long ago so it's starting to slice through pretty quickly. But if it was starting to get dull, it would really flatten out that tip more before it started slicing through. Oh cool, I'm glad you like Light Elegance products. I'm really having fun trying them out. So now our next step is going to be to bring these in flush with the natural sidewall. And you would wanna make sure that you bring the skin down and protect it with your own finger. So I will usually pull the skin down away from the tip and put my own finger at risk so that if I do accidentally file into anything, it's me. And this is where having a trainer hand can come in handy for practice. You can see if you are actually getting a hold of their skin good enough or if you're missing it and cutting into your trainer hand. And then the other thing you want to do that I completely neglected is cut the edges off your file. And you can just use another file. Generally, you're probably using one grit of file to prep the natural nails and another grit of file to do the tips and the enhancements. So you can use the two files to take the edges off of each other. It just makes it less likely that you're going to cut the skin with those sharp edges on the files. You want to make sure you're holding the file straight. So it's pretty tricky for me to show you that I'm doing it straight, just holding it normal. So I'm going to kind of come in and hold it weird 
so that it looks straight for the camera. Because if you file at an angle at all, what will happen is you'll take the under arch out from under the nail. And the under arch, oops, sorry. Didn't mean to crack your knuckle there, Rosie. What happens if you don't file straight is you'll take this under arch out. So let's say we're trying to file this flush and instead of filing straight, I come in this way to try to file that flush with the side. Well, now it's flush with that side, but if I look at my under arch, I'm starting to cut into that under arch and that will make it more likely that she'll crack there. So you wanna make sure that you're filing that straight. Also, by filing it this way, not only have I lost some of my under arch, I'm also starting to make the shape crooked. So if I put this, let me put something dark up there. Actually, I'll just put my finger up there. See if I put my finger up there, how it's starting to go crooked. So you wanna make sure that your file is up there straight and that you're not coming at it from an angle. It's pretty tricky to file straight on this side. So do what you need to for holding. If you need to come in and hold your file so that it's backwards, if you need to come in and file from the top, whatever you need to do so that your file is lined up straight, do what you have to do because what's important is that the file is straight. And obviously I'm gonna redo that one because I don't wanna get graded with my missing under arch. Then to keep your square shape, you would simply file straight across and just slightly curve under at the edges to soften the corners so they don't hurt themselves. And a quick trick for square, if you flip it around backwards, it's much easier to judge if your square is straight across looking at it from the back than looking at it from the front because you eliminate any visual distractions. So notice when we're looking at it like this, we don't see the visual distractions of maybe the smile line or if the finger is a little bit crooked. We're just seeing the tip of the finger and the shape of the nail. And another trick for getting it really straight across is if you can just take the file a couple of swipes to really straighten out that edge. Another thing with blending tips and with Light Elegance, they have a product that they apply over the tip so that it's not necessary to buff the shine off. However, I like to taper the tip of my tips because if you look at the end of the tips, there's a little bit of thickness to all tips. And if you taper them just a smidge, it makes it so that when you sculpt your enhancement on the tip, you don't see that little line between the product and the tip at the edge. So I'm just tapering it the teeny tiniest smidge and getting rid of that fringe. And these are actually crazy thin at the end, which is awesome. So not a lot of tapering is needed. I really just barely tapered it and it's already super, super thin. So really just a few strokes and it tapered it right down. And these going through much of the same. So this one was past so it's going to be just a matter of protecting the skin. I 
and going in straight Quit. while I'm protecting the skin to take that tip in so that it becomes like the natural sidewall. I'm gonna try and get it straight for the camera again versus holding it straight. So you're coming straight at the tip, not lining it up straight in the nail. So you're not trying to get straight in here against the nail like this. You're straight against the tip because we're eliminating the excess tip. And if you start right up against the nail from the get-go, your file would be crooked. So if I were filing from right here, I would file it crooked. Whereas if I'm coming straight at the tip, I'll bring the tip up against the natural sidewall once I get the excess off of the tip. Yeah, sorry, my daughter just got home, so her dogs are excited. Yes, you can remove the shine off the tip for adhesion, depending on the product line that you use. I just watched the instructional video in the 201, and she mentioned when they're using their Bonder product that it does that for you, so you don't have to actually buff the shine off the tips when you're using that product. So see how when I'm coming straight at the tip, the bulk of the tip is disappearing and my file is getting closer and closer to that nail. So now it's gonna line up with that natural nail versus if you were filing at the natural nail trying to work at the tip from that angle. And then you would do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna try and do that straight where you can see that it's straight versus holding it where I can see. Which might be a little tricky. All right, Rosie, you might get a few scratches so that they can see. I don't know if I can do that side straight so that you guys can see. Maybe if I go slow enough. There we go. So straight and see how the file is connected at the tip. It's just debulking the tip. And it brings those corners in. And then you can just do your shaping. And I always just as a habit, hang on to the tip when I do the shaping. If you're wearing gloves, you can get away with that. If you don't wear gloves, don't do that because you'll just put your dirt and oils off your skin onto the nail. And then as a habit, I tip their fingers up so that I can look at it from the back. But you guys can't see it if I do that, so I'm gonna tip it this way to check the shape. Of course, I can't see it from that way. So you guys check the shape, and then I will check the shape. It's a little crooked, isn't it? So I'll just adjust the shape a smidge. Better. 
and see how when you look at it from this way, it looks one way. But when you flip it over, it just removes the visual distractions. You just see the shape. So always check your shapes from the other side, especially when you're doing tips, because it's so much faster and easier to adjust your shape while it's just a tip than once you have the enhancements on there. Now I'm going to hold it like I would hold a file versus trying to hold it straight for you to see in the camera so that I can get those last little bits that I can't get when I'm holding the file funny. And doesn't it look, these two are the same size, then doesn't it look much better when you bring the sides parallel with the nail? So I'm not going to make you sit through blending all of the rest of these sides in. I just wanted to give you the opportunity to get some tips and tricks for using the nail trainer hand. Who knew we were going to get a bonus on how to use adhesive in a hot salon? and all of those fun things and some tips and tricks on getting those corners and some things on using a nail trainer hand and all that fun stuff and clearly i'm going to be practicing my tip application a couple more times before i turn it in for a grade and all of that fun stuff i hope you guys had fun in this pop-up live i appreciate that you joined me i had a lot of fun with you do you have any questions before I sign out? And of course, you're always welcome to leave questions in the comments if you're watching this as a replay. I always come back and answer questions. And for those that were curious, the adhesive is Wildflowers. If you need a brush on adhesive for anything. And these were the natural curve tips that came in the student kit for my Light Elegance University experience. Thanks for joining. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and have a profitable and amazing week in the rest of your week in the salon. Take care, everybody.